Well, again, thank you for coming back to Mass, and especially thanks to Mandy, Hillman, and Michelle for persevering and coming to the waters of baptism today. Our hearts and our prayers are with you as you become Christians today, as you enter into this long pilgrimage through life to heaven through the waters of our Lord's baptism. On Friday, we celebrated the Feast of the Sacred Heart, and then yesterday, the Feast of the Immaculate Heart. These are the two last feasts of Easter in a way. I have to confess, I'm appreciating devotion to the Sacred Heart more as I grow older. It's said that men especially become more sentimental, more people of the heart, more in touch with our feelings perhaps as we grow older, more prone to cry. And so the Sacred Heart means more to me now than when I was younger. I do remember the statue of the Sacred Heart in front of my parish church as a boy, and it seemed weird to me. The statue of a kind of effeminate man pointing to this red thing outside of his body, that his heart was outside of his chest. It's an attempt to portray the inestimable mystery of the love of God for us. Really, John 3.16, God so loved the world. We can never understand how much, it's infinite, the love of God. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His heart was opened on the cross for us. From his heart poured infinite grace and mercy. Well, we have a statue like the one at my boyhood parish back in the alcove there, the Sacred Heart candle rack, and it's, it's kind of like the one in, at my parish as a boy. But I do like also the prophecy from Jeremiah to describe the Sacred Heart. The Lord is with me, a mighty champion. In other words, do not fear, little flock, for I, the Lord of hosts, am with you. I will defend you. I will provide for you. I will guide you through the valleys of darkness to eternal light. Jesus says in the gospel three times today, do not fear. The first words, fear no one. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Not one little bird, one sparrow falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. It's kind of a funny way of saying you're worth more than a whole flock of sparrows, so do not be afraid. Also in today's reading, Jesus tells us what to fear. Fear him, rather. Fear the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Fear the evil one in the sense of keep your distance from him. Today, the three catechumens will three times reject sin and Satan. We are keeping away from that one because he can kill not only my soul, but my body with it in eternal fire. Fear is a major factor these days. First, there was COVID-19, and we still don't know what it really is. Fear of the unknown, fear of the death and mayhem it causes, and the social chaos that followed. But then there's more social violence, our, our deep fear that America is fundamentally racist and there's nothing we can do about it. We sense that something worse is coming, that our society is fraying at the edges. We're, we're afraid that our democracy, our republic is coming apart at the seams. On Thursday, a friend and I cycled up to Hawk Hill in Marin County across the bridge. We looked out over the city and the whole Bay Area. I think it's the best vista point for San Francisco in the whole Bay Area on Hawk Hill. And it's a beautiful day. The sun was shining. The wind lightly breezed. And we looked at this beautiful city and this beautiful nation we live in. And yet there's so much fear. There's anxiety. There's social chaos. What are we doing to ourselves? My friend, my priest friend said, 
The Islamic State doesn't have to attack us. All it has to do is sit back and watch us destroy ourselves. A lawless mob pulled down three statues in Golden Gate Park just five blocks from here the other night. Are they trying to rewrite history? Are we not grateful for everything that God has given us, that we have to be violent? What is this fear that drives so much chaos? I was 16 years old when I heard over my little transistor radio in 1978, the Pope is dead, the solemn pronouncement of the CBS newscaster. Paul VI died in 1978. But in October of 1978, October 16th, a young Polish priest stepped out onto the balcony of St. Peter's Basilica with these words in Italian, non abbiate paura, be not afraid. They became John Paul II's clarion call over the next 26 years. And these words have shaped my own manhood, my own fatherhood, my priesthood. There is a God, and man is safe as long as, and to the extent that, he carries out his Christian mission. Nothing can touch a man of prayer. I was in the seminary and had seen a lot of chaos and confusion growing up in my own home parish. I, I knew a lot of sad, bitter, unfaithful priests. Many had left the priesthood. And I was afraid in the seminary that I would end up like them, a sad, bitter, unfaithful priest. And an older priest said to me, do not be afraid to enter the seminary, to enter the priesthood, because nothing can touch a man of prayer. If you are faithful, if you are consistent to your breviary, to your holy hour, to your daily mass, to confession, nothing can touch you. That's called the fear of God. Nothing can harm a man who fears God. Fear meaning fear of cutting ourselves off from him, fear of offending him, fear of separating ourselves, of disturbing that relationship between the heart of God and the heart of, and, and the, the, the soul's heart. We are standing on the edge of a great chasm. Life has lots of cliffs and chasms, but we don't have to jump off. As a young priest, I would take youth groups up to Yosemite Falls, the tallest cataract in our country, 2,200 feet straight down. It was a great hike, four hours up with moms and dads and kids, and you get up to the top and there's a railing and you, you kind of look over the edge, you look straight down, you see this hundreds of tons of water hurling themselves off of this cliff into midair. And it, we had to kind of overcome our fear just to get near that railing, but once you get there, you say, well, this, this would be certain death if I, if I fell off, but I don't have to fall off. I don't have to jump off this cliff. God has provided us a stable rock to stand on and a railing to hold on to. The rock is Christ and the railing is the church. We can use the intelligence God gave us to rightly order our lives and our lives together. We only need to follow God's ways and we will be safe and peaceful and joyful even if we die. Do not fear those who can harm the body, but those who can harm the soul and body in Gehenna. Why be a Catholic? Three young people will enter the Catholic Church in just a few minutes. I was with a wonderful family last night, another family that's entering RCIA with their four children. And it's wonderful to see how many people come to the church. Why? To live freely, to be without fear as we walk along the edges of life's cataracts. 
People come in a steady stream to RCA to find freedom from fear, to find a liturgical and sacramental life that will nourish their freedom from fear. And so I welcome Mandy and Michelle and Hillman to enter the freedom of the children of God. We have nothing to fear and everything to hope for, everything for which to rejoice in heartfelt gratitude. Our mighty champion is with us.